Good morning, students. Our topic for today's class is couple. In our last class, we have learned about the movement, how the movement is produced, and what are the factors affecting the movement. Right? Now, here we will discuss about the couple. So, we have learned that when a single force is applied on a pivoted body. Right, that means if a body is pivoted at a point and if force is being applied, then what is happening? The rotational motion will be there, right? And the direction of rotational motion depends upon the direction of the force in which direction you are applying. For example, if I am applying the force over here, then the body will move in anti clockwise. But now, if I change the direction of the force, then the body will move clockwise, right? So, uh, but actually the rotation is always produced by the pair of forces. In our last class we have learned about that for a action there is always a reaction. That means there must be a reaction force should be there. And where it is? Till now we have learned about that single force. But what is happening whenever this single force is being applied? Then at the pivoted point a reaction force is always there. Reaction force. And this reaction force is what? It is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. That is equal and opposite force. Right? So, now, force we have learned uh, that there are two forces always there. Now, if I calculate the moment for this, for this point, where the force is being applied. For this moment, what will be the moment? The magnitude of the force and the distance, the perpendicular distance between that, right? But what is the magnitude of the reaction force? The force, the same force that is being over here, that will be the magnitude of force. But what will be the moment? Moment is what? Force into distance. And distance from where? Distance from the pivoted point. Now, as the reaction force is at the pivoted point itself, that means distance is what? Zero. So, movement becomes zero. Right? That means whenever a force is applied at the pivoted point, uh, at a pivoted body, right? Two forces are acting over there. One is the force you are applying and the second one is the reaction force that is over there. But as the movement of the reaction force becomes zero. So, that's why we are considering only that force. But there is always two forces. So, we can say that the pair of, so we can say the couple is what? The pair of external force and the force of reaction, right? So, we can say pair of external force. This is the force you are applying and the reaction force, right? Is called the pair and these two forces these two forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And one thing more, whenever it's about rotation, these two forces acts on the different line. There, what I'm saying, just like over here, the point the line of the action is over here and this force will act over here, right? For example, if I say an object is there, right? If the force, one is here and another is over here. Their line of action is different. Then only the rotation will be produced. So you can say that opposite and parallel force is not acting along the same line, right? That will produce the rotation and that form a couple. So, a couple is always needed to produce a motion, right? So, what is happening for example, if I say when you open the door, when you open the door and it is fixed at the hinge, right? Whenever you are applying the force over here, one force you are applying with which it is moving and another force is at the hinge itself, that is the reaction force. Similarly, if you are opening the fridge, then again, one force at the door of the fridge, another reaction force is on the hinge of it. So that means there is always a couple of forces, right? But sometimes what we do, we require a larger turning effect, right? This example, I said to open the nut of a car wheel. Then 
can you do it by single hand no in that case you need a larger turning effect in that what we need to do we need to apply two forces so to open the nut of a car wheel what we do we we apply two equal forces right for example this is a car and then if you want uh, to apply the force to open that then what you need to you need to apply you need to hold it over here and here then what you need to do you need to apply the force so that it should rotate in a same direction right so just to have the larger effect the larger turning effect what we do we apply both the forces to turn body in the same direction just like turning the tap if i say you need to turn the tap then for this what happens if you hold it then what happens you need to like that even if i am saying i want to move it then what i will do with both the hands see with with my thumb and thumb and finger what i am doing i am moving it so what i am doing i am applying two forces to have larger turning effect one is in this direction and second one is opposite direction so these two forces forms a couple just like example i say for the turning of a water tap tightening the cap and even the turning a key in a lock right and uh, have you seen uh, when we hold the steering we hold it by both the hands right in steering what happens it is being holded at this point also at this point right so either the force over here it will be downward but over here it will be upward now the force is in different direction but its turning effect is what it is moving in the same direction so that forms the couple right now what is the moment of the couple moment of couple okay in force we have done that moment is what moment is force into distance wherever you is having the single force but now it is about the couple for example i am taking an object here a force of half is applied over here this is the pivoted point and over here another force is also applied that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction this is a point and this is b point so from here to here for this f1 right you can calculate the moment so moment will be what it will be force into distance so it will be force into oa similarly moment at b point for this one it will be what force into ob so total moment total moment of what total moment of couple it will be what f into oa plus f into ob so can i write f into oa plus ob right and oa plus ob is what force into ab this is the distance in between the two forces acting so i can say that moment of couple is what either of the force either because both the forces are equal in magnitude multiplied by perpendicular distance between two forces perpendicular distance between the couple arm this arm this distance is called the couple arm right because this is the distance between the two couple forces right so you can say moment of the couple is what it is if i say moment of couple is what any one of the force are the force multiplied by the couple arm right so that will be the moment of the couple next i will explain you the equilibrium of the bodies right equilibrium of bodies in that we will learn that when the equilibrium position what uh, what is the equilibrium position of a body in uh, till now we have read that uh, that when a single force act on a body it can produce a translation motion if the body is free to move for example if i say a object is there and it is free to move now if you are applying the force then it will move in this direction this is called a translation motion right but now if the object is pivoted right it is fixed at point now if you are applying the force over here then what will happen it will rotate right depending upon either the object is move 
either the object is free to move or either it is pivoted at a fixed point depending upon that the motion will be there but in certain circumstances this might be there a lot of forces acting on our body and the resultant force is zero for example if i say a uh, irregular lamina i am taking that is pivoted at a particular point now a lot of force is being applied over here for example 10 newton i am applying over here 20 newton and 5 newton right now again over here again if i am applying 5 newton 20 newton and 10 newton right so see because of these forces the body will move in the clockwise direction and because of these forces the body will move in anti clockwise direction right now but either it is able to move or not see total force is how much 10 plus 20 30 30 it is 35 newton that means 35 newton of the force is trying to rotate the object in clockwise direction now again it is 35 newton it is trying to rotate the body in the anti clockwise direction now because the total force is equal in magnitude right so they will cancel that means the body will not move because over here your anti clockwise movement is equal to the clockwise movement and also it depends upon the distance from the pivoted point also so equilibrium position you can say that when a number of force acting on a body when a lot of number of forces are acting upon a body and they do not produce any change that means the body either it is in the rest position it remains in the rest position or if the body is moving it remains in the motion and with the same speed then the it is called the in the equilibrium position right so that means so your uh, equilibrium position depends upon the algebraic sum of moment of all the forces right what is the moment of this force what is the moment of this force what is the moment of this force the total moment of this force must be equal to the total moment of this force then only the body will not be able to move and this is called equilibrium position for example if i say seesaw right in seesaw what is happening happen it is always at a fixed point right but now if one girl is sitting over here having the weight of 80 newton and same over here 80 newton then what will happen it will have a horizontal place right it will have a horizontal line that means it is what the equilibrium position but now if i say over here is 30 newton and over here is only 50 newton this is the center this is the center that's why i'm taking example because if it is center the distance and this distance it is same right now the movement will depend upon the force but if the distance is also different then your clock rotation depends upon the force as well as the distance in between them right so either the body is moving in a clockwise direction or either the body is moving in anti-clockwise direction that completely depends upon the force as well as the distance from the pivot point or you can say the movement it's not only about the force you need to calculate the movement first and then only you can calculate the either the body is in equilibrium position or in the motion position right next is our kinds of equilibrium so the equilibrium is of two kinds one is the static equilibrium and another one is the dynamic in static means to say when a body remains in the state of rest under the influence of several forces then it is called the static equilibrium that means if the body is not moving it should not move either how much the force is being applied for example i am taking a uh, object is there and now the 10 force of newton is being applied and the same 10 force is being applied in this direction now the body will move no the body will not move right similarly a book lying on a table then what happens it weight x downward right and the normal reaction force acts upward that's why the, uh, the book on the table it remains in the rest position this is what static equilibrium even in the beam balance when the beam balance is at the horizontal place horizontal position right what i am saying if the beam see beam balance if it is like that that means 
both the moments are not equal but if the hori beam balance is the horizontal one it means to say what the total movement for this and the total movement at this at both the condition the total movement becomes equal right if the force is over here the rotation will be what anti clockwise and another force is here then what will happen it will go like that that means what is happening if this movement and this movement both are equal if the clockwise movement is equal to the anti clockwise movement right then what is happening the it will be in the state of the rest position right this is called the static equilibrium that means if the body is in rest position if it remains in the rest position either the force are applied over there right then it will be there the static equilibrium next is your dynamic equilibrium in dynamic equilibrium means to say when a body remains in the same state of motion if it is in, it is in the translation motion it must be there if in the rotational motor motion it should remain in the rotational motion that means if it is not changing its motion under the action of force then it is called the dynamic equilibrium for example if i say raindrop see when a raindrop is coming downward and it is reaching to the earth surface from a height then what is happening we say that raindrop moves with the constant velocity raindrop moves with a constant velocity the reason is what the weight of falling drop this the weight of falling drop is balanced by the sum of the buoyant force and the force due to the friction see when the raindrop is coming its buoyant force is there because it's liquid and another thing when it is coming down the friction force is there so it's whatever its weight weight is acting downward and the buoyant force plus the friction force are acting upward so both of them they balance the resultant so hence it moves with a constant velocity that means it weight does not affect the velocity when it is coming down the velocity of the raindrop remains the same another example if i say the aeroplane aeroplanes also moves with the constant height when upward lift on it balances its weight see when the aeroplane is moving then what happens its weight the weight of the aeroplane the weight of the aeroplane is acting downward and its lift act upward hence it is being balanced and hence so what is happening it remains in the same motion similarly if i tie a stone and just rotate like that right then what is happening until uh, until i am applying the force over there the a uh, stone will rotate in a circular motion why it is happening because i am um, the my force has become equal to the centripetal force so till then my force the force i am applying that is equal to the centripetal force till then the stone will rotate in the circular motion so these are called the, these are the examples of dynamic equilibrium because the tension in the string provides the centripetal force required for the circular motion so we can say the motion of a planet around the sun or the motion of the satellite around the planet or the motion of electron around the nucleus of an atom these are what these are the cases of the dynamic equilibrium so we are having two types of the equilibrium one is dynamic and another is one is static and both the things what are different either it is dynamic or either it is static when it is about the equilibrium its motion its state of motion does not change if it is at rest position it remains at at the rest position if the object is moving its motion is not affecting it's not coming to the rest position it is continuously in motion right so what are the condition of the equilibrium conditions are there are two condition first condition is that the resultant of all forces acting upon body it should be zero what i am saying the resultant of all forces should be zero right that means what the what the clockwise force you are applying what the anti clockwise force you are applying or you can say the move upward force and the downward force the resultant of all the forces must be zero and second condition is that algebraic sum of 
मूवमेंट एलजेब्रिक सम ऑफ मूवमेंट ऑफ ऑल द फोर्सेस ऑफ ऑल द फोर्सेस दैट मस्ट बी अबाउट द पॉइंट ऑफ दैट पार्ट ऑफ पॉइंट दैट मस्ट बी जीरो इफ टू कंडीशंस आर सेटिस्फाइड राइट देन your equilibrium position will be there right or you can say in this case if your clockwise movement is equal to the anti clockwise movement why i am saying the algebraic sum of movement or sum of the clockwise or anti clockwise because clockwise movement is taken is negative right if negative movement and the positive moments both are equal then it will become zero right so if two conditions are satisfied then the object will remain in the state of equilibrium next we will learn about the principle of movements in the next video